Hello, and welcome to this video on Newtonian gravity. In this video, we're just going to think about what is the proper way to treat this force of attraction between masses that we call gravity. And by the proper way, we mean at least in the context of Newtonian physics. So let's think about gravity. And didn't we already answer this question? Isn't it just that the force is m times g, and g is 9.8? meters per second squared, seems to me that the question's done. Or is it? Well, let's think about g. Is it fixed? Is it really 9.8 meters per second squared? What can affect it? We've actually already talked about this before. We've said things like, if you go off to the moon, then it's one-sixth of this 9.8 meters per second squared. So g can change depending on where you are, and in fact, in various practice and things, you'll know that there's uncertainties in G which come from variations even around the Earth. So how exactly is, um, what is G supposed to be? How do we understand that it's actually changing? What does it depend on? And really, why are things changing G? So Newton tells us the answer to this by writing down gravity not as just m times G, but a much more general form, a new constant, capital G, times the mass of one object, times the mass of the other, divided by the separation squared. And that separation is the distance between the center of masses of the two objects. So if we're treating them as point masses, that's where they would be located, and the distance between them then is pretty clear. But if we're now talking about extended objects, we need to specify that the distance is not like surface to surface, but rather center to center. And then, in the context of that new formulation for what the force of attraction between two masses, capital M and little m, um, is, we can rewrite the previous F equals mg to obtain that little g must in fact actually depend on this new constant g, capital G, and the mass of this object that we're experiencing gravity from, and our distance from its center squared. So Newtonian gravity basically comes about with a way of determining g. Now it becomes clear, since it depends on the mass of both objects, if I jump to a different planet, well then I've changed capital M in that previous equation. Clearly the force of gravity has to change. And now I can see, any time M is bigger than the mass of the Earth, I will have a larger g. If m is smaller, then I'll get a smaller g. But there's, of course, a caveat, which is also that it depends on the separation. So if I make a bigger planet in terms of mass, but it's got a bigger radius, then potentially, in fact, little g could be smaller because we have to divide by that separation squared. So Newton has just quantified for us what's going on with little g.